All right, David Kahn here with another question from the question bank on uh, stellar evolution. Uh, first is to outline the process that provides the source of energy for stars while on the main sequence. Uh, so main sequence stars uh, fuse uh, hydrogen into helium. That, that's it. Uh, that's what they do. State the conditions required for the above process to take place. Well, hydrogen atoms are loath to get close to each other. Uh, they're made of one proton each, so they all have positive charge. And so uh, it takes an enormous pressure to get those like charges into one place. So you need enormous pressure. Uh, and with those enormous pressures, you get temperature, enormous temperature. State the reason why stars leave the main sequence. Uh, well, they're quite stable in the main sequence. Uh, their gravitational force tries to compress them, but the uh, outward pressure of the energy being released and making its way out through the center of the star uh, from the energy released from fusion balances that force. Uh, so as long as there is energy being produced by fusion in the core, the star remains a stable main sequence. So that stops. It leaves the main sequence uh, when they run out of fuel. Uh, so the reason would be that uh, the main sequence stars uh, can run out of hydrogen. Um, maybe a better way to say that would be when there is not enough hydrogen, and enough hydrogen uh, for sufficient fusion to take place. Uh, to counteract gravitational attraction. That's when the star starts to collapse. Uh, okay, so when that starts to happen, uh, that's what part D is all about. Main sequence stars eventually evolve to form red giants. With reference to the Chandrasekhar limit, describe and distinguish between the subsequent evolutionary paths of red giant stars that have evolved from main sequence stars that have a mass about two times the mass of the sun and about 10 times the mass of the sun. So what happens to large stars and very large stars? Uh, okay, well the first thing that happens is uh, as the hydrogen runs out, the core collapses. This generates new, higher pressures and temperatures and allows for fusion of helium. The new energy, or new power I should say, pushes outwards the uh, outer layers uh, to form a planetary nebula. So the core collapses and the outer layers expand. Um, but if the remaining core has a mass less than 1.4 solar masses, that's the Chandrasekhar limit, no further fusion takes place when the helium is used up. And the star slowly cools. Uh, and the star forms a white dwarf and slowly cools. All right. I can never seem to spell helium. All right, so that's what happens to sort of a medium-sized star like our sun. Uh, but what about a star that's much larger than the sun? 
in larger stars. Let's see. Uh, the remaining core can continue to fuse heavier elements like carbon. Uh, eventually, though, uh, the fusion uh, that supports the core from collapsing further uh, must run out. And this is going to have to happen for any star of any size, because once you get past a certain limit, no more energy can be made from fusing heavier and heavier elements. You know, somewhere around iron or lead, there's just physically not any more energy available. Um, so eventually, uh, that runs out, and the core uh, collapses in a supernova. Uh, depending on the mass of the core, the result is either a uh, neutron star or black hole, depending on whether the uh, pressure of the supernova is able to overcome the neutron degeneracy pressure and form a black hole. Okay. So if you can't overcome the neutron degeneracy pressure from a, an, a, a very, very, very large core collapsing, then you form a, a neutron star, not a black hole.